I'd like to welcome everyone to Orson's uh, funeral, this memorial service honoring Orson. Thank you very much for uh, uh, moving inside. Um, I appreciate that. Um, we're going to listen to some music, and we're also going to have uh, Pastor Lyle is going to lead us today. So um, I'll turn things over to him. Thank you. Well, I too would like to welcome each and every one of you to this celebration of life of Reverend Orson Deemer, more affectionately known as Orson. Orson went to be with his Savior on Tuesday, May 26, 2020. Orson, I can happily say, was a friend of mine. And I'm very honored to be here today as we remember him and reflect upon his life and to give praise to the Lord of heaven who fearfully and wonderfully made him, saved him, and now has restored him. Leanne is going to lead us in the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Our piano is not with us today. <laughs> the transition didn't work, so we're going to sing a cappella. But Orson loved music, and he loved harmony. So as we lift that up, hearing your voices together will make us think of him. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As Peace. 
side. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I'd like to just read some scripture of comfort. Um, and I must admit, I question whether or not to even share this one because from our experience on this side of heaven, it makes it difficult, but knowing what the Lord knows and what those that have gone before us experience, it makes perfect sense. And I would think that any of us who are parents and have had our kids away from home for a portion of time, or if you've been a child and you've come home, uh, you might be able to appreciate the scripture, but it's found in Psalms 116, and it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. And that was certainly Orson. He was a faithful servant of the Lord, and the Lord welcomed him home. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Isaiah says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And when you pass through dark waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. In Hebrew, it says, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God. Psalms 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. And where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven in the earth. Orson loved music and now we are going to listen to one of his favorites by a group that was one of his favorites, Selah, and is called Wonderful Merciful <coughs> Savior.
Paul Bean, Arson's brother-in-law, is going to come and share some thoughts. Um, so I don't have a lot to say, but I'll say Orson was a little guy, but he was a big man. He had a big heart. And Orson was, he was true. Orson was faithful. Orson was not a phony. He was not a stuffed shirt. Orson, you got exactly what you saw in Orson. And he was a, a wonderful leader in our church. He wasn't just somebody that, that belched out orders or told people what to do following some type of a corporate guideline. He was truly a leader and he led by the example that he set. Orson was not a phony and for that very reason there were never any phonies that were attracted to Orson or came around Orson because Orson was truly a man of God that demonstrated God's love to everyone that come into contact with him. He loved nature. He loved creation. I can remember talking to Orson uh, about hunting. And he had the remotest interest in hunting because any little critter or any big critter that was out there was something that God had created. And he felt like they all deserved life just as much as we deserve the life that the Creator gave us. I loved him. I love him. And I respect him for that. That's pretty much it. We're going to listen to another favorite song of Orson's called All My Tears by the same group, Selah.
a man like Orson makes honoring his life really easy um, because there's so many great things to say about him. But he also makes it very difficult because he was such a great guy and he had so many great things to say about him. And one of the things that makes it difficult is where do you even begin? Um, it is hard. There is a um, rock out at the Inland Cemetery where Orson will be laid to rest. There's a rock out there because my father is also out there. And it says, it's hard to forget someone who gives us so many wonderful things to remember them by. And Orson certainly will not be one that will be forgotten. Uh, just to capture some of the things, um, because there are so many things that could be said about him, I just kind of tried to narrow it down, and then it blew apart at the end, and it went wide. <laughs> but that was um, just Orson. Um, first of all, I think everyone would agree, he was godly. Um, I thought it was interesting. I did not know this about him, but he thought it was disrespectful to write in your Bible. I'm glad he never asked to see mine. <laughs> he would have probably thrown me out of the church. <laughs> but he himself never did that. And it was a personal conviction of him because it captures the heart of who he was. He was a man who loved the Lord so much that even the pages for which his words were written, he could not write anything or mark anything because he thought it was so precious. I think it would be true to say that Orson had an uncooperative heart physically but spiritually, he had a whole heart, and one that with every beat, beat after God's own heart. He loved Jesus, and he strived to be and to do better for his Lord in his relationship with him. And it wasn't to win God's approval, but because of the love and approval that he had already experienced with the Lord. Orson loved Jesus, and it was very evident on his life and whenever you interacted with him you could tell that he loved Jesus very much and cherished the relationship that he had with Jesus. I think it would be very safe to say that he was a great husband and father. Um, I think it was very evident in the tribute video that all the pictures whenever there was Sam or Cindy in the pictures you could just see the love and the overwhelming sense of emotion that he had for both of them. He loved you very much. And Sam and Cindy, he always had your best on his mind. He cared for you and he cared about you. And you could hear it in his voice every time he would mention either one of your names. I know because I heard him speak of you often. <clears throat> He wanted you both involved in the church and especially in the area of music that you both know very well. Anytime there was music playing, he always wanted Sam to step up with his banjo or Cindy to be on the keys. And I think it was because he was involved in the church and he always wanted you to feel involved and in belonging there. And if perhaps you didn't feel it, he felt it too. And it was a priority of his, and he cared for you very much. <clears throat> I also love how it was told that uh, if he could not do a task around the house, oftentimes, like mowing the lawn, he would recruit somebody and get them to do it for him on his behalf so that Cindy, when she came home, wouldn't be given that responsibility or feel like she had to bear it. That was a sign of his love for you. Sam and Cindy, Orson loved you deeply, but then again, you already knew this because he was a great husband and a great father. I think it would be also very true to say that he was caring and sensitive. Orson had a quiet, gentle way about him. He is a man who had so many reasons to care for only himself that no one would blame him if he did but his concern was always for other people and those that were around him. I think of the people of the church. He wanted everything the same for when we all got back together again, when we opened up the church and have, you know, where we can have church again after the COVID thing. Orson wanted to make sure that Cindy was on the keyboards and that Debbie and, and uh, Sandra were both up there singing because he wanted it to feel like home for when people came back together again. 
Orson um, never wanted to step down as senior pastor. We had had conversations oftentimes about uh, him serving in that role. One, he had a passion for it, but two, um, he desired to see the church succeed, and he wanted to see it succeed. And he would not hand off the church until he knew that the church was in the hands of someone who cared and loved them as much as he did. And when it came to the church, he crossed the I's and dotted the T's. And he had all the little details covered from who was going to shovel to the walks on what day to who in the summertime was going to mow the lawn and many other details concerning the church. He always had the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And the reason why was because he loved the people that he pastored in his church but he also loved those outside the church, and I knew this personally myself. Um, it always amazed me that he, in his condition, would call me often and out of the blue and ask me genuinely and sincerely, and he always said it the same way. His conversation always started out the same way whenever I'd answer, and he would say, hi, this is Orson, how are you doing? And he really meant that. He wanted to know how it was that I was doing. And Orson's care and sensitivity each time he did that was so sincere that it blew me literally away. More things could be said. I know that he loved his family, his heritage of faith, and you know that as much as you loved him, he also loved you. And he wanted me to share a story at uh, Carol Bright's um, service a few weeks ago. He was planning on being there, and uh, he joined Carol for that service in heaven. Talk about a committed pastor and a visitation. <laughs> she was shocked, and I'm glad, because after this story, she deserves it. <laughs> but she, he would go over and he would visit Carol, and... Um, in the time that they were visiting, she would talk about all the different deemers that she know, knew and how this deemer was such a good deemer and person and this deemer. And she would just go down through just a, a list of deemers that she knew and how great and wonderful people they were. And then she'd pause for a moment and she would turn and look at Orson and she would say, what in the world ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> And the thing that was so cool about that was that every time he would tell a story or something like that, he always had this, and I was talking to Debbie about it, that he had this like grin. And it was almost like when the cat ate the mouse type grin and nobody knew it, or a Cheshire type grin, you know. And Debbie said it was a snarky grin, where it was a grin where it was knowingly, but also he'd have this like twinkle in his eye. <laughs> and, uh, um, he would tell that story and he would get that twinkle in his eye and one of the things that I've realized in the last few days in the weeks is that talking through many of you to talking to you um, I've noticed and seen that same sort of grin and that same sort of twinkle in the eye and that same sort of laugh and humor that he had is carried throughout the whole family and the thing is is that I hope you never stop doing that because one of the things that has ministered to my heart is that when I see that, I get a glimpse of Orson in you. He loved you and he knew he was loved by you. There are so many other things that we could talk about. I thought it was interesting that he was a clown, not just jokingly because he had a great sense of humor, but he actually went to clown school. So when you talked about clowning around, that was serious business to him. Um, but he also enjoyed puppets and puppetry, which would go hand in hand with that. I did not realize that about him. But it also speaks though towards his heart because he loved and cared for kids. And most kids love and care for those things. He would oftentimes around the church include them in different tasks and responsibility. He made sure to minister to everyone in his church, even to the youngest ones. That was the type of person that Orson was. You might remember different things that spark different memories for you for um, with Orson. Many of you might think of the family vacations at the Outer Banks in the Carolinas. 
Others might think of Otter Creek and going there. That was a place that he loved and he really enjoyed Otter Creek. Maybe you might think of the color purple. I notice that many of us are wearing purple today and is obviously in honor of Orson because he loved the color pur purple. Maybe it's any time you might want to engage in a game of pinochle. You might think of Orson. I know many of you played that with him. Some of us might remember him as one who had never had quit installed in him because it was amazing how he always kept foot, putting one foot in front of the other and he never stopped swinging. He was always a fighter. And the thing was is that he did it with such a great attitude. We knew that life was a struggle for him most days and most tasks were difficult for him. But I don't remember ever hearing him complain. And certainly if he had, he would have been justified in it. But that wasn't the type of person Orson was. He kept putting one foot in front of the other, and he never stopped swinging, even as he went down. Maybe you might remember him in his sweet, kind, and gentle, inviting way that he had about him. I think it's interesting that Leanne, my wife, had shared a story that she had had a conversation with Orson and he wanted us to sing Wonderful Merciful Savior at church. And she said to him, she said, boy, that song is really high pitched. She said, it's geared for men, it's, it's high pitched. And Orson, in his typical way, he smiled and he said, well, of course, that's why they call it hymns. <laughs> Sounds like him, doesn't it? Just not skipping a beat whatsoever. One of my favorite movies is called Wonderful Life. I know everyone is familiar with it. They show it about 10 times every year at Christmas time, which I'm happy for. But in it, Clarence was telling George Bailey, he says, strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many others' lives that when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? Orson's life touched my life. Orson's life touched your life, and Orson's life touched many other people's lives. Is there a hole? Yes. But is it an awful hole? No. It's a wonderful hole, one in which we can fill it with all the wonderful things Orson gave us to remember him by. We're going to um, listen now to one of um, Orson's favorite songs. It's called, Is He Worthy? by Chris Tomlin. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through?
going to view a video of Orson literally the last time he spoke in public and nobody knew it at the time but I think it's interesting that when he spoke he spoke of heaven and then after that Leanne's going to lead us in a song but if you want to see the video it is available on his tribute page at reynoldjunkoff.com so um, we're going to listen to Orson now It's not my fault. <laughs> we were all ready. I was ready at 11 o'clock. And all these young kids who think they know technology <laughs> somehow didn't know exactly what was going on. It's not my fault. Good morning. Welcome to Woodside Wesleyan Church. Whether you're close by, or you're miles away, or even a few states away, we welcome you to worship this morning. I don't know about you, but I am really, really tired of the stay-at-home, stay-safe rules. I'd much rather be out and about visiting people and doing all sorts of things. And I don't know about you, but you might be tired of the stay home, stay safe as well. I was really hoping that next week would be our first week back here in the sanctuary together. But they've extended the stay home, stay safe rule. And I was not very happy about it. I've been thinking all this time what a wonderful time of worship we will have in a couple of weeks. What a wonderful thing it will be when we all get together and can worship together as one. And almost always when I think that, I am gently reminded by God that there is a better, greater time of worship in store for us. Can you imagine not just tens or hundreds or thousands of people, but millions upon millions upon millions worshiping God together. The book of Revelation tells us 
several times of the worship that there will be on that one great day. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and forever. Amen. Listen to this. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. I think about how great it will be when we get together as people all in one place, but then think of what it's going to be in heaven. What a day it will be when we gather together in heaven, worshiping the God who was and is and is to come, the Lamb who is worthy of all praise. What a day it will be. What a day it will be when we can gather together here in this place. But what an even wonderful day, more glorious than we ever thought or imagined, when we gather around the throne and worship the one who is worthy. Heavenly Father, this morning we pray that you would be with us. We thank you for the promise of heaven. We thank you for the promise that one day, one glorious day, we will all worship around the throne. We give you praise and honor and glory this morning for all that you are, for all that you have been, for all that you will continue to be, you are worthy. We worship you now. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will you join me in singing when we all get to heaven? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In a mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the skies but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, 
will sing and shout the victory. First Peter 5.10 says, In the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. I just want to pause and look at this verse for just a few moments today because I think this verse perfectly describes Orson's experience with the Lord. And it says, um, In the God of all grace, Orson experienced the love and grace of God in his life daily and continuously there's a story that when you would go maybe to the hospital and visit orson i know one person particularly went there and he was sitting in bed because of his love of music and he was sitting up in bed and he had his eyes closed and he was listening to his music about the lord and he was had his eyes closed and he just had his hand up and he was worshiping the lord orson knew what it was to love God and to experience the grace of God in his life. And it says, called you to his eternal glory. That glory that Orson was called to began here on earth. Orson experienced the glory of God in his salvation and his relationship with God. Francis Chan says, heaven isn't about going to heaven. It's about loving the king. And so Orson was already experiencing heaven, this side of heaven, because he loved the king of heaven and now he is with him in his eternal glory i think it's interesting that song is he worthy by chris tomlin i know cindy and orson went to a music festival in gaylord called big ticket and chris tomlin was one of the featured artists for the evening or that time of that festival and orson was so excited because he was going to get to hear chris tomlin sing that song orson was called to his eternal glory in heaven, and he is with God in heaven now this day. But he experienced the glory with the Lord even before he got to heaven through his salvation and his relationship with him. Orson loved Jesus with all of his heart and being, and it showed in his life. It says, suffered a little while. I would say that Orson's suffering wasn't just a little while. It was a long time. We figured that it was in his early 30s that he began having difficulty with his heart. And Orson, being 59, suffered more than just a little while. But I know in comparison to where he is at and how he is feeling now, I got to imagine for him, it felt like just a little while in his life. Sometimes I have crazy thoughts, and I'm, to be honest, I was thinking of Orson being in heaven, and I could just, for some reason, picture him like running laps around the throne room of heaven, and the Lord finally saying, Orson, please, you know, like, come on. And Orson turning to the Lord and saying, Lord, you of all should know that I haven't gotten to do this in a long time. And the Lord saying, okay, just one more lap, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds something like Orson. Orson is no longer suffering. He, and I love this next part, it says, will himself. Jesus himself, it says, will restore you. It is Jesus who touched and restored Orson when he got to heaven. I think it's so amazing when we think about the Lord and all the different ways that he had a touch on person's lives throughout the scripture. And we think of Jacob when he wrestled with him and he wrestled with him all night long. And it says in the scripture that he touched his hip socket and it created a dependency upon Jacob who was self-reliant to be dependent upon the Lord. That same Lord is the one who touched and restored Orson. I think about the scripture that talks about that God measured out the universe with the breath of his hand, the width of his hand, he measured and marked it out, demonstrates how big our God is. I think about the scripture that talks about that the Lord leads the stars out into the place of the heavens where they should be, like one who would lead a horse out into the pasture. That same 
same Lord is the one who touched and restored Orson. It was the Lord himself. I think of the Lord who, um, the two blind men, when he was on his way to Jericho, he touched their eyes and they were able to see. I think of the little girl who the Lord said was only sleeping and they laughed at him. He went in and he took the little girl by the hand. He touched her, raised her up, and told her to get up and gave her back to her, her mother. That same Jesus is the one who scripture says here will himself restore. And he touched Orson. And I'm so thankful for that. And it says that he will restore them. What does that restoring say? It outlines it right here. It says that he will make you strong, firm, and steadfast. That's the description of Orson today. Orson is no longer struggling with a bad heart. He is no longer weakened and not allowed to do certain things because of his heart. Orson is now strong, firm, and steadfast and will always be. Orson is not suffering anymore. He is in the presence of the one he loves and worships. He has been touched by Jesus and he is restored. And that gives us reason of hope and a promise to believe in because it says it in God's word. And we need to today take courage and be of courage in the hope and the reality that Orson is well. He has been touched by Jesus and he is restored. And that gives us something this day to say, praise the Lord and to say to the Lord, Praise you, dear God, for what you have done and how you created Orson and how you have blessed him and touched him and restored him. I'm going to close in prayer, and then afterwards we're going to listen to the song, Praise the Lord by Selah, and then our services will be concluded. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Orson. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the man that he was, how the example that he set after one who chased after you, dear God, with all of his strength and with all of his might. Father, we're thankful for his loving touch upon our lives, but Lord, we're thankful even more for the loving touch that you placed on Orson's life. Father, we have so many reasons to celebrate and to be thankful today because of our experience and our relationship of knowing and loving Orson. And Father, today we want to acknowledge and give you praise for that wonderful, sweet, special gift. And what, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for Orson's life. And we ask this, Jesus, in your precious holy name. Amen. Serve only to remind you that they're 
drop powerless behind you when you praise Him. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise Him. Praise the Lord. For our God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. For the chains that sing to bind you serve only to remind you that they drop powerless behind you when you praise him praise him praise him when you On behalf of Orson's family, I'd like to thank Pastor Lyle for his wonderful message here today. I'd also like to thank Leanne for her beautiful voice. I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you for uh, your patience on allowing us to move inside. I truly believe in my heart that uh, this gives us the opportunity to focus on celebrating Orson's life rather than on whether or not we were going to get rained on. So thank you for that. Um, in just a few minutes, we'll be leaving for the cemetery, um, so you may step to your cars at your leisure. Thank you. <laughs>